I actually wanted to start this video off at the end. As you can hear, I got my furnace running. So if you're sitting right now and your house is cold and you've checked the errors within your actual furnace and you see that it's an air pressure switch, uh, know that that might not be the final symptom. So what I wanted to just diagnose real quick, I have two videos that came out of this problem. The first was I thought it was the air pressure switch because the air codes getting kicked out by the furnace told me that, check that area. The problem I forgot is what then I was testing it, I was pushing in the button with all the paneling off, I can hear a hum. And you're gonna see in the video at the end, uh, after I fix the switches and think that that's completed, you're gonna hear the hum coming out of the motor, which tells you that my blower motor was actually out. So when you're testing this diagnostically, and you start it by pushing in the switch when the paneling's off uh, to activate everything. If you hear a hum coming from it and the blower's not actually activating, that's where you wanna start. It's gonna throw the code because all of the electrical wiring and checks and balances would go through and that would be the first error that would actually come back. Now, if there was no electric going to the blower, that might kick an error off, but for at least my furnace and my status, not having that blower even start at all would not even indicate that there was something wrong with the switches. So I ended up replacing those anyway. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. But ultimately what I had to do was replace my blower, which was just as simple as replacing the switches. So before you go calling somebody, if you can get your hands on the parts, which is going to be another challenge you'll face, that is the easiest way to do it is to fix it yourself. You're going to get charged hundreds of dollars if you hire a tech in. But if you want to do it yourself, you're willing to take it apart and look at it. Uh, it's super simple to do. It took me maybe a half hour total without trips and everything like that to go get the parts. It's super easy to fix. So let's just get into diagnosing, or actually actually flipping, flipping out and switching out the air pressure switches. If you are here today, you're probably in a bad place. If you're like me, my house is freezing. I'm in Ohio in February. It's about 20 degrees out. My house is about 50 degrees. Furnace has been off all night. Uh, so what we've done is we came in to check to see what the symptoms were. Um, what I know from my alert, so down here below or somewhere on your furnace, you should have a light that blinks. Now mine's blinking green. Um, I got the switch pushed in to see if it would show me my error, but basically I have uh, three red lights flashing. It's in a, a sequence there. And that tells me based on my panel that I have a pressure switch stuck open issue. So if you're here because pressure switches, um, well, what happened was your furnace would maybe come on, you might hear a buzz or a hum, and then nothing happens, and then it's throwing some errors at you. So if you haven't figured out how to get the doors off or anything like that, there's other videos for that. The first thing you just always wanna do, make sure you turn off your power, uh, turn off your gas. There's usually a gas line that comes in. You can see it coming in here. Follow that until you find a valve, shut that down. So my two pressure switches are right here. I have two of them. And what I want you to do is make sure, number one, you take a photo of both. Take a photo so you know which wires go which way, um, you know where all the connectors are going and which hoses are there. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do, before you diagnose anything, check your hoses. So these hoses pull right off. You can pull these off, pull it off of the other side, and then what you wanna do is maybe just kinda of blow some air through here. Make sure there's nothing obstructing inside. Rare cases, that'll happen, um, but check in there. There's another hose here that goes to the second one. Make sure you pull that off, do the same thing. Now, do not blow from this plugged in and on the other side because these pressure switches only take so much pressure. So if you threw too much in there and it wasn't broke, uh, you will break it and then you'll have to get a new one. So let's talk about real quick, what you're looking for are the numbers on top here. You're gonna wanna look close. Uh, mine here says 341660. My second number is 363255. Uh, those two numbers are gonna indicate which parts you need. Now you might have trouble tracking down parts locally because typically the supply stores are going to sell to professionals that do this for a living. But of course, Amazon will sell to anybody. I've linked the two down below that I'm using here. Uh, I have a Luxair, but you can find different replacement parts for different models. It's it's a dime a dozen, it's appliances. So when it comes to appliance parts, just find and make sure you got the number going on. Also pay very close attention to this uh, decimal number here. This is telling uh, the machine, or it tells itself, how much pressure is used in each. You can see one's 90 and one's 40. So what we're gonna do here, there's one screw. We're gonna pop these both screws off. We're gonna disconnect our wiring, disconnect our hoses, pop the screw off. I'm gonna replace one on a time just to see if maybe it's one versus the other or both. Um, but I bought both switches just because I didn't wanna have to run back and forth uh, to getting those things. So let's go ahead and remove those, connect it, and see what happens. All right. Pull this off. Oh, does not want to come off easily. There it goes. Number two. And there's a little screw in there, right there. That's the screw we're taking off. Let's 
Try not to drop your screw. Got my new switch. Now behind here, there's a little ridge you can see. I'm gonna just make sure that everything fits in. It's gotta be at the same angle I took it out at. So I'm gonna put that in that way. I'm gonna start my screw too. Where that goes, it's a long screw, goes in. Ooh, almost lost it. Tighten that in. Go ahead and reconnect. Make sure those are on. And reconnect. Make sure my other two hoses are in. Reconnect my top hose. So now that I've recycled everything, I'm going to go ahead and turn my power back on. So this one, I got red on top. Red on top, white on the bottom. A little mental notes of that. Red on top, white on the bottom. So, this one's a little, there we go. Red on top, white on the bottom. Got my screw, start that back in there. Again, putting it right back where it was, same angle. This one's a, turned a little different, but let's put a sticker in there. Uh, O-N-N-C, make sure of that real quick. O-N, yep, looks good. Okay, right there, that there. Flip it, hold it. Now that you've seen all that part of the video, understand it is super easy to flip out those switches. So I do have the links down below to the switches that were in mine. Uh, they're between 30 and 40 bucks, depending on where you get them. You might be able to get them cheaper if you find a supply house. So check out the switches. Make sure you read that model number off. Now, if you want to continue on, if yours has not been solved and you do have that hum, there's also the link down below, as I mentioned earlier, to the actual video of me replacing the blower motor, which is super easy to do. Uh, so be sure to check that out. If this did solve your problem, congratulations, you have heat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video uh, so others can help find it to help solve their issues with their air pressure switches going in their uh, furnaces as well. Stay warm.